that nobody has that much cognitive dissonance that they would think it would be okay to put something this horrible on the internet unless it was on purpose is what I was thinking. Right, you know? wouldn't you be embarrassed, you know, you'd get off that flight and you're like, my God, I, I got a, you know, whatever that airplane is, a $500,000 airplane, all this, all these ratings and it's a perfectly clear day right. and I can't fly it 40 miles without getting lost. Um, right. Do, 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 yeah, maybe I don't I want people to see internet. that. Why would I want people to see that? Hello, aviators. Welcome back to the Profile Playbook podcast, where we bring you the tips, tricks, hacks, and shortcuts to enable you to become a pilot faster and cheaper. I'm Sean Ritchie. And I'm Mike Martin. And today we've uh, we've got a continuation to the Tennessee Fly Girl video uh, that we, we posted uh, last week, I guess it was, uh, in between the Flying with Trent video and, and this video. Um, and, uh, we're, we're coming back to this topic because, uh, not only is it very popular and it's, it's sparked a lot of controversy, a lot of comments on our channel, a lot of emails coming in on this and, and a lot of learning really from it. But, but really, I mean, as we discussed in the first video, Sean and I just, we reviewed the Blanca Lirio crash video. That's what sparked our interest to, to record a podcast on this topic and kind of, kind of share that with you. And then after after we did the podcast, you know, our interest sparked even more, just like probably a lot of your viewers. So we started looking at all kinds of content online uh, regarding this this crash. And it turns out now the, with the information that we know now, we know so much more than than what we did when we made that first video that right. it's, it's really, really a lot worse than what worse, we really yeah. thought. I mean, worse it, than what we thought. Yeah. 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 And we wanted to do a follow up to talk about that and, and, and another issue that would, that, that showed up in that video. Uh, but, but, you know, we want to start by saying, uh, this is a very tragic accident. Two people died. Um, we don't want to make light of that. The purpose of this episode is not to point fingers and Monday morning quarterback, everybody that was involved, not only, not only the, we're not trying to Monday morning quarterback, just the pilot and the passenger, but the people that trained her. Uh, but what we're trying to do, this is a pilot training podcast, and we're trying to, you know, learn from this uh, because a lot of you, to be quite frank, are at, at similar experience levels to her in this video. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we wanted to touch on some of the new information that that's came forward. Yeah, and before we get into it, I, I thought we should mention Mike. You know, Brandon. Uh, who's in our coaching call class, uh, the ProPop yes. Playbook, the program we sell online. He, uh, in the TN Fly Girl, our original one, uh, we, we were talking about good decision-making as a pilot. And, yes. and he had just happened to have sent in a video of him soloing, and the winds kicked up, and he told the tower, hey, this is beyond my personal limits. I want to taxi back. And the tower congratulated him on all this stuff. And I just thought it was... Uh, the neat video to throw in there. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we got a text from Brandon, uh, and it turns out that there's been another tragedy. That yeah. aircraft, that aircraft that he was flying, that is in the video, the other TN Fly Girl video we posted, has now been destroyed. Uh, someone lost their life. And they two were, people actually, yeah. Two people, yeah. Uh, flying, doing a training flight. Uh, they crashed in the Everglades in Florida, and it, yeah, we don't know a lot of details about it, but just tragic. Yeah, terrible. And and you know we yeah we don't know and we don't want to share any any preliminary information on that crash, and that's not the purpose of this. But w the purpose of this is to to just you know think about the safety issue. In, in aspects of what you're doing. I mean, there was, I, when I was at, you know, a lot of the viewer stages in my primary training and throughout, um, there were a couple crashes, you know, I, I, I witnessed a, a runway overrun and a bonanza that was really scary. Um, um, there was a local flight school that had a fatal crash. Um, you know, so, uh, these machines are very dangerous and you don't want to carelessly operate these airplanes. Um, cause I mean, the stakes can be, you know, fatal 
Um, um, and, and we're seeing this with, with her and the Tennessee girl and her videos. And then also in this, this latest class, I think it was in Broward County, Florida, you guys can Google it and just see the preliminary, um, information, but, uh, yeah, uh, word on the street is it was a, possibly a training flight, but really no idea what happened there, but, but these things are dangerous and, uh, uh, we want our viewers to be aware of that. Yeah, and it's not just uh, you know hurting yourself or someone else, but there's you could hurt your career by you know bad decision making. Um, you certainly you bend or break one of these machines and end up in a ditch or something. You know that can follow you around for a long time, and uh, you don't you don't want that either. No, uh, no. But yeah, so let's let's talk about this. You know, we we said it's worse than we thought. Um, you know, after getting into some of this and actually watching some of her videos, I'm, I'm, I mean, I was just beside myself in some of this. Yes. I mean, how is this possible? Uh, I mean, just to, there are so many videos already out there on YouTube where some, some really good content and putting the links down below to some of these videos, these other right. YouTubers that have really broke down stuff like to the point of, well, you can see the sun's coming through the cockpit in this direction, which means she's pointed in a southeast direct, you know, that kind of thing, that technical of a breakdown. Yes. Um, yes. I was impressed with some of the stuff I was watching out there. That's not what this video is, but just to give you an example of what we're talking about here. Uh, yes. Using, you know, a crosswind correction on takeoff, you usually turn the ailerons into the wind. She's taking off with the ailerons the opposite direction of being in the wind, which is now aggravating the entire purpose of putting the ailerons into the wind. Um, yes. Uh, just 100% total. No. That alone could cause a crash. I mean, yeah, it really could. You know, for sure. If you're in a strong enough crosswind and you're, you know, you're, it's, it's bad enough when you have someone not applying any correction whatsoever, but now you're applying correction in the opposite direction really uh, could be a dangerous situation for sure. You know? Right. And I think Sean, the most uh, shocking thing that I've seen since we made the, the, the last videos, there's a couple videos circulating. The one I watched was from pilot debrief. I think there's another one. What was the one that you watched? Uh, uh, it was pilot was disconnections, which is yeah. one of the links I'm putting down, but, and pilot debrief. We'll put that one down there too. Yeah. But. Yeah. So they're showing this video that has surfaced of her doing a cross country flight with her father after she has a license. I think it's in that debonair and it is just, it's really unbelievable. They've got the the ADSB data uh, to show the flight path of this flight, and then they overlay that with the cameras in the cockpit. And basically, she she takes off from uh, I, I wrote down th th this RKW airport, and it's going to DKX airport. And these are just these are satellite airports of uh, Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so it's like right east and west of each other. Yes, yes. And the, the, so Rockwood Airport and then downtown Island Airport. And she's taken off from Rockwood. And I mean, I'm talking it's almost an exact it's 40 miles. This cross country. The weather is perfect. And it's almost an exact zero nine zero easterly heading that right. she needs to fly to get with to an interstate with an interstate underneath of her. Right. In With, high, and, and an airport she's been into before somebody said that the airplane may have been purchased from that airport or something yeah. or maintenance she's done there before so she's been in and out of there anyway yeah yeah and this is like i mean i'm not trying to throw stones but it's i've never seen anything like it i mean she and she's in this super sophisticated nice airplane with all these gadgets that we don't even need to to pull this off i mean mm -hmm. um all you have to do is take off and fly to the east um, and I mean, the ADSB data is staggering. And for those that are just getting into this and don't know what that means, you can download the actual track through air traffic control with the transponder. And she's basically just has no idea where she's going. She's turning west and then south, then looping back around to the north. And then they're they're overlaying this um, the, the, this audio that in the whole thing's on 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 tape. Uh, uh, and video and uh, it, 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 he, he, she's got her dad who's not a pilot saying no i i think that's the highway go over here and then they start flying west again i mean it's like holy smokes 
Yeah. I mean, how do you not know just general cardinal headings in a familiar area with, with the interstate underneath of you? And, but it's, it's beyond that. There's other things like she, she's overwhelmed by the equipment. She accidentally turns the radio off one time. Um, right. And didn't even realize she wasn't communicating. Um, it, it, what was the other thing? There was, uh, it, this, I think she's trying to couple the autopilot to the, right. to yeah, the there's HSI. A whole, yeah. There's it, a whole it, bunch of autopilot issues with not just standard functionality of whether it's following the nav course or the heading bug and a bunch of stuff like that. It, one of our viewers actually commented after I started watching some of this stuff, Mike, my initial thought was this is an act. Nobody yeah. is this bad that actually has a right. license certificated pilot. This is an act. This is and the YouTube comment on our our video we posted. Um, I should have had it pulled up so I could give him some, you know, recognition. But the guy yeah. said this is just the modern version of it. There was, I guess, an actor or a comedian who would do this. Because, you know, the old thing is, you know, whether you got people that love you or hate you, you're getting views, you know, haters right. and whatever. So this, that's what I was thinking. This is just an act that nobody has that much cognitive dissonance that they would think that it would be okay to put something this horrible on the internet unless it was on purpose is what I was thinking. Yeah. Right. You know? Wouldn't you be embarrassed? You know, you'd get off that flight and you're like, my God, I, I got a, you know, whatever that airplane is, a $500,000 airplane, all this, all these ratings, and it's a perfectly clear day. Right. And I can't fly at 40 miles without getting lost. Um, right. Do, 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 yeah. Maybe I don't I want people to see internet. that. Why would I want people to see that? So right. I just thought it was an act. It, it has to be an act. Um, and, and, uh, you know, if I was the examiner, the FAA designated examiner that gave her a check ride for a private, that would probably be my testimony in court that this, yeah, was Sean correct. brought that up off camera. And that's an interesting, cause I, I was hesitant on the act thing. I'm like, I don't know, because still logically, I can't think of why somebody would post that. Um, um, still, it just seems like a stretch, right. but, but, so, but, you know, now that you bring that up, um, and yeah, the then, next question is, but she did perish perish you know right so what's your answer to that you know if it's an act well my thought is uh this is all this is all sean ritchie theory <laughs> there's nothing yeah, to yeah, back yeah. this up right um my thought is well what would get views an in-flight emergency something like that and she had been goofing around with this autopilot before in videos so my thought is she let the autopilot do its thing to get the, you know, get it on camera. Mm -hmm. And then she let it get away from her a little too much for her three, 400 hours of experience to recover from is, is yeah. what I'm thinking happened. No matter what the, we're going to find out eventually because uh, the recording devices were recovered intact at the, uh, I read the preliminary report, yeah, right. the, air, the aircraft um, struck the ground at 228 knots at 11,900 foot per minute descent rate man with a trim setting of uh negative five degrees and man. Uh, yeah and the cameras were intact and this thing was being recorded so we'll know exactly what happened here yeah 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 and and you know just to just to circle back around on 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 this for our viewers so you guys can get some and girls can get some value out of this you know um situational awareness is extremely important in flight training and one of the things excuse me as flight instructors that we're looking for is people uh, that, that have this and this is this is not just vfr flying uh situational awareness is very important in instrument flying you know uh you know with the moving maps and the nav aids and where, where triangulating your position and and just knowing where you're at um even even now in the jet world 
Um, you know, you see a lot of guys have uh, failed check rides and simulators because they lose track of where they're at and they, you know, they fly through a heading or an altitude or a hold or something like that because they're overwhelmed by what's going on in the automation in the airplane. They end up, you know, flying through, throwing over the holding fix and not turning or something like that. So this is a very, very big deal. So as an instructor um, and as a student, but as an instructor, you should be able to sniff this out. You know, if you're, if you're, client is having problems with this um also as an instructor you're signing you know the students off to, to navigate on their own i mean remember that's a big part of your training is these solo cross countries yeah. and if you have a student that you know can't even do basic navigation i mean you, you know in this video she some of the she's totally lost in the airport she take take took off from is totally visible out her windscreen right you know right right through, and, through the camera and it's hard to see sometimes things outside the window of the airplane from one of these little gopro cameras and you can blatantly clearly see it in one of her videos she's lost looking for the airport and it, it, outside the window of the airplane the viewer of, on youtube can see the airport Yes, yes. And I've had students that have had these issues that we have to work through and you have to say, hey, let's put the brakes on that. We've really got to work on ground based navigation, you know, so visual navigation, we need to, you know, you, you're relying on then you start turning off the automation and you make sure they're looking at things on the ground. And, and, you know, it can be difficult. Now, if you're, if you're from, you know, Kansas City, and you're learning to fly in Kansas City, some people pick it up, you know, they know, Hey, there's the home Depot and there's the interstate in the corner of the home Depot. And I right. just need to turn right to go over here. Now, a lot of people travel for, for, for training. So you may, you may live in Kansas city, but you do fly, flight training in Florida. So when you get down there, it's a little harder for you to navigate because you're just not used to how things are laid out on the ground. But that's mm -hmm. part of the things that you got to, you know, comprehend as a pilot. And yeah. one other thing that came, as soon as I watched this video, I remembered something I used to tell my students. I mean, I haven't instructed in small planes in 25 years, but I remember they sometimes they would present their flight log to me. You know, they're getting ready to do their solo cross country or whatever. And like the heading would be completely wrong. Like they did all this planning, but the heading would be wrong. And and then I always said, you know, when you're all done and you're doing your flight planning, you need to look at this and 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 fact check it and say does it make sense that's a big thing so the first thing you look at is the heading okay i'm going from this rkw airport to the island airport okay the heading should be like around 90 degrees right if if you're calculating a heading that's not that then you need to not be doing that right um how long is it going to take to fly 40 miles well it might take you know 30 minutes okay well how much fuel is the does the plane burn an hour does it burn 12 gallons an hour so your fuel burn should be around you know six or seven gallons or whatever if your fuel burn is 26 uh something's wrong with your calculation you know what right, i mean right. so 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 everybody needs to sometimes step back you know you get you get so focused on not only the automation but the in this case there wasn't a lot of it was just you're focused on doing the math and plotting your course and using plotters and you know, the winds and all this stuff to figure out a hey and all. And you're not even looking back and looking at the big picture. You know what I mean? But in this particular case, that that really would have helped her a great deal, you know, right. and they ended up making it. They they did at the end. But, man, it was not pretty. <laughs> right. Right. And yeah, this this whole situation, this accident is really is I've been teaching my boys how to fly. Yeah. And uh, the oldest one's only 15. He can't even solo for, you know, quite a while or less than a year now, but, uh, you know, it really has made me realize that I need to, you know, drone into them, you know, constantly that, you know, the old stick and rudder pilotage skills of looking out the window, like what you just said, Mike, I love that. What makes sense? You know, we're, we're heading West. What should your general heading be? Um, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, because they are learning to fly in a completely different world than we did. And it would be so easy for them to get all wrapped up in the four flight and the moving map Garmin that's installed in the airplane instead of, you know, take it back to the basics and turn all that stuff off. You know, I've heard several flight instructors say that they don't want their students to even know four flight exists until yeah. after they get their private pilot certificate. Because yeah. It's going to be too easy to cheat on that. Yeah. Crutch. 
to cheat on those initial solo cross countries where you're supposed to be building the confidence of looking at the chart and seeing, well, wait a minute, you know, I should be seeing some railroad tracks. Some, oh, there they are over there. Okay. All right. So I'm a couple degrees. I need to turn over here a little bit more. If you had four flight, you're just following along the pink line, fat, dumb, and happy and not learning anything about, yeah. you know, the forces that are going on out there with the wind and whatever else, you know, and right. I see it, uh, my neighbors, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I can't think of a better example than this. You know, I live on the west side of Cincinnati. The town mm -hmm. is, is like 3,500, 4,000 people over here. It's a small right. little town, suburb of Cincy. And uh, my next door neighbor's kid uh, turned 16. He's got his driver's license, just got his driver's license. And um, he's out there driving around with him or I'm sorry, he's doing the learner permit, not 16 okay. yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were at the Kroger, the grocery store here in town. And the, they get in the car and head off, pull out of the parking spot. And he's like, okay, which way? He's asking his dad, which way? He's like, what do you mean, which way? You know how to get to the house? He's like, well, I think it's this way. Like, how do you not know? We're... There's there's only like three roads in six turns to get there. I mean, we're in the town you live in. How do you not know where you live? Well, I'll tell you how. Because these kids have been staring at screens their entire life the whole time they've been riding around in cars. Right. Unlike, unlike you and I, Mike, who all we did was stare out the window and watch our parents drive the car. So when we turned 16, it was like, I don't know, we couldn't wait. Now these kids, yeah. they don't even care if they get driver's license. And when they do, they get lost in their own town. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Man. I know. I know that's... really basic stuff. Like, yeah, uh, here's, here's another one. If you're taking off and it's 5 PM and you're heading due East and the sun's in your eyes, <laughs> something might be wrong. Right. Exactly. And, and you right. know, even these heading indicators, they can persist, especially in these old airplanes, man. Right. It might say you're, you might be holding a heading of East, but 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 it's processed, you know, 80, 90 degrees. The guy didn't reset it or whatever. Right. I, I yep. mean, you got to just you got to look at the big picture. You yeah. Know? When I watched that video, Mike, of what you were talking about when she took off from the airport and she doesn't know which way is which and where, how to get home and whatever. I, I just my stomach was tight. I was cringing. Oh, man. Because it's hard she's, to watch. Yeah. Because she's staring at and for, the only thing she needed was that little magnetic compass bouncing around in the in the oil in the you know the little ball up there on the dash is all yeah. she needed for that flight but right. she also had an electronic directional gyro in front of her actually it may have been a full on hsi that would have never processed that would have shown her which way east was uh, she had a moving map gps installed in the dash and then suction cup to her window to her left was an iPad with ForeFlight open. There is absolutely no way she should have had any question about anything. Yeah, and, and in your hometown, you know. Right, with an interstate underneath of her running right to the place she's going. Yeah. Um, this was, that's why I was going with the theory that this was an act. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you never know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was for views. Um, I, 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 I never had. I've never seen her channel before the accident and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, maybe it was a stunt. You know, but uh, know. she's also also uh, very. She was very. Uh, uh, they're saying very successful in business. Um, you know, and um, uh, that's a, that's another thing we see um, m more in the jet world. I mean, we see it. Uh, we see it uh in props too but um a lot of these ceos and stuff want to fly themselves you know and and uh they don't have the patience um right. they're used to running stuff um and uh, uh they're surrounded by people that are yes men including their pilots and sometimes that can lead to problems i mean that's it's a known thing you know in the industry i'm not saying that was i don't know anything about her personality or any of that well it know. was always the bonanza you know they called them the doctor killers right you know, the because they were you know the doctors you know, that was the whatever these wealthy individuals can afford machines that are beyond their capability and experience so right uh, you know. And that debonair, that was a, that's a pretty, 
complex, fast airplane to be moving into right after, you know, your private pilot training, but it looks cool. There's that, uh, urge to, to fly it, you know, and if you got a lot of money, um, you know, you're like, Oh, I want to get something nice, you know? So, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But we won't dwell on this. Yep. Just, uh, you guys and girls watch this video and, uh, and, and, you know, probably, you know, dig into some of this stuff on, on this crash also, because, you know, these things happen and, and just see how that applies to your uh, own training. And don't be afraid to say, you know, I think I need some extra work on this, or I right. don't feel quite comfortable with this. Maybe we need another hour of ground navigation or whatever it is. Um, this right. can definitely apply um, to your own situation. Right. And yeah, like I stay off the four flight. If you're working on your primary training, your private, you're only hurting yourself. It really I mean, you're going to have yes. the rest of all the other certificates and ratings to mess with for flight and your whole career. So get the basics down, you know, locked in. And, Absolutely. Uh, leave some comments. You know, it, Mike and I don't always respond to every comment on YouTube, but you guarantee that we read them all. Um, but, yeah, we uh, do. Yeah, leave some and, comments and, and subscribe and like and you know all that stuff. All check that. out check out the propopplaybook.com that that whole thing I was talking about Brandon's a part of our, the live coaching, our, yes. Yeah, the live coaching. Uh if last, you're just getting started in your yeah. career and, and you need some one-on-one -on -one, uh help from me and Sean, then uh we, we're happy to help. It's it's really been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Last week's was uh awesome. It was probably the biggest turnout ever and you know, you get to ask us your questions directly. And, and sometimes last week was really cool because there was some great questions and some of the other students that were in there had just gone through the exact same thing and were able to answer the other people's questions before. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was easy for us. Yeah. <laughs> kind of taking on a life of its own. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yep. loving it. Loving it. But thanks for viewing and uh, pound that like button for us and we'll keep cranking out great content for you.